Thank you very much, Gordon, and especially for this wonderful hospitality. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, from an Austrian point of view, the vision for the region is simple and clear. Full-fledged membership in the European Union based on concrete reform results. In my view, the EU's overall strategy for the Western Balkans continues to be the right one. But in a changed environment, we might need to adjust the methodology somewhat to achieve better results. I currently see three main impediments to the enlargement process. First, enlargement fatigue in the European Union itself due to the focus on other burning issues like economy, due to certain experiences and mishaps in the last enlargement round, and due to perceptions in the Euro European Union's public and polity. Second, bilateral issues block the process far too often and for far too long. And third, the perspective of eventual EU membership is too far away so politicians in the candidate countries give in to short-term thinking and populist reflexes instead of keeping up the long-term vision and clear determination to pursue the necessary reform agenda. What could be the possible strategies to counter these impediments? I believe by first dynamizing and front-loading the enlargement process without giving up the conditionality. I've already proposed at the high-level meeting in Sarajevo on 2nd of June that the European Union could begin the process of screening for all accession candidates in the region, including Kosovo, already in 2011. This process of comparing national legislation with the acquis would give the countries an orientation what to work on concretely even before official accession talks have begun. Second, doing away with bilateral impediments in the accession process. The increased readiness and efforts by regional leaders to solve bilateral problems are encouraging. These bilateral efforts need to be enhanced and encouraged for, from outside to lead to results. Explicit provisions to this effort effect could be included in future EU accession treaties. Increased regional cooperation can also be a vehicle for solving bilateral issues. And as the difficult economic situation has reminded us, enhanced regional cooperation is also a simple necessity to advance economically farther. I think that economic prosperity, even if only modest, will alleviate many of the problems your countries are facing today. Point number three, better communicating the advantages of enlargement to the public, both in the candidate countries, but more importantly, in the European Union. We need to communicate better to the public that enlargement is a win-win situation. In order to combat enlargement fatigue, the benefits of enlargement and the risks and costs of stalling or impeding the process need to be better explained to the public in the European Union. And point number four, reminding the politicians of the region of their responsibility for the long-term good of their countries. Regional politicians have to act more responsibly. This is particularly true in Bosnia-Herzegovina. The inability of local politicians to overcome thinking and acting in ethnically defined talks really give the risk that Bosnia will stay behind in the accession process. We can help, but we cannot continue to make the hard choices for the elected political leaders. So, dear colleagues, overall I am rather satisfied with the progress of the region in the last couple of years, and I am equally confident that all countries of the region will eventually make it into the European Union. The hard work is for you to do. 
we will support and encourage you seriously. Thank you very much.